Hello everyone and welcome back to the studio where today I want to talk a little bit about good old Japan. If you guys remember a few videos ago, I mentioned that I'm going to Japan for a little bit to go visit my beautiful girlfriend in July. I've been counting down the days and making a list of everything I want to do when I go to Japan. Like I want to go to Kyoto and the Kirby Cafe, which I do plan on making a reservation like six months in advance before I go. I will fight someone for that reservation. But it got me thinking, a lot of the things I want to do are very popular and very popular places I want to visit. What are some things that aren't so popular? Things that are unique or even strange. So today we are looking at some of the most unique and strangest places in Japan. First we have the Vampire Cafe. Are you someone in the 30s or 40s that can't get over the absolute masterpiece that was Twilight and want to dine with vampires yourself? Well look no further than the Vampire Cafe. There are many, many, many different cafes in Japan from traditional made cafes to more unique ones. The Vampire Cafe is no exception. Located on the 7th floor of the Love Pax building in the Ginza district in Tokyo, guests can visit the Vampire Cafe that takes them away from the sunny upscale Ginza district and brings them to a gothic paradise. With the place being covered in red velvet, the floors being covered in red blood cells, and many other morbid decor. With the waiters and waitresses being dressed up in snappy tuxedos and French made dresses. Along with the decoration, the food also has a morbid theme to it. Here, you can live out your vampiric desires. This one seems like a fun time, but more for Halloween. I don't think I'm gonna visit when I go to Japan, but if, if I go to Japan during Halloween, I probably visit. Next, we have Japan's Yokai Town. I am very excited for this one. Located in Fukasaki Hayago, tourists can come and see multiple different statues of famous yokai from famous local folklore. There will be yokai hanging out in front of businesses, sitting on benches, and you'll also see the town's famous yokai like the kappa named Kajiro, peeking out of the pond, as well as being able to sit down with many other famous yokai. There are in total 20 different yokai statues that you can find that you'll also be able to see, sit with, and take pictures of. I'm definitely going to this place. If you are new, you should know that I'm a very big fan of folklore of any type, and so I'm definitely going to go check this out when I go to Japan. Next, are you a big fan of Mario Kart? Well, how about Mario Kart in real life? In Akihabara, you will be able to drive around the streets in go-karts, and you can also dress up as different Mario characters like Mario himself, Luigi, Peach, as well as other famous Nintendo characters like Pikachu and Snorlax. You can either drive around during the day, or drive at night and see the city turn neon colors. I really want to do this, but at the same time, I feel like I would be terrified. Because on top of having to drive with Japanese traffic, you also have to drive on the left side of the road, and my dumbass would most likely get mixed up and drive on the right side, the right way, the American way. You do need an international driver's license in order to do this, so if you do plan on going to Japan and want to do Mario Kart in real life, then I do recommend doing that way in advance. I might actually do this if I have time, my plan is the first week or so, I go visit a bunch of the sightseeing places, all the touristy spots, and then the rest of the days is going to all the nerdy shit that I want to do and dragging my girlfriend along with me. Next up, are you a thrill seeker? Are you also a foodie? Well, if you're both, then head on down to Guanpin Fugu, where you can eat fugu, also known as puffer fish. Now, for those who don't know, puffer fish are extremely poisonous. Enough poison, in fact, to kill eight grown adults. But even though there is a chance of death with about 6 deaths per year, people still eat this with about 10,000 tons consumed each year. Every chef that prepares this dish has years of training and has to pass a national written and practical exam before they are even allowed to touch this dish. You guys know how there are those very fancy and expensive restaurants with serving sizes about this big and you think to yourself, Man, this better cure cancer. I kind of feel like it's the exact opposite for the people who go eat this. Man, I better leave in a very fancy coffin after eating this. Hang on, actually, how much does this cost? This dish can cost up to $20 to $150 per dish. Dear God. Yeah, no, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to eat this. I'm good. I'm good. God, if I ever have that, it better be the best fish I've ever eaten. I have heard it's very good, so I'm a little bit curious, but just a tiny bit. For this next one, are you having a crappy day and you have no idea how it can get any shittier? Well, look no further than the Unko Museum, otherwise known as the Poop Museum. I have a buddy from China who recommended a bunch of train museums for when I go visit, and uh, he didn't mention any museum like this. The Unko Museum is best described as a poop-themed themed park that focuses on the different types of cuteness of poop, 
with different activities from attractions and arcade games. Who comes up with this crap? There are a few different types of museums that I found and none of them I could tell on YouTube, but just know that this is not the weirdest one out there. Next for all you cat lovers, we have the island of Toshirojima, also known as Cat Island. The entire island is full of cats outpopulating the human residents, which in the last 50 years has dwindled from 1,000 residents to 100, with more people being shunned from the island due to the increasing cat population, which from what I could find now ranges from 130 to 150 cats. The locals do see these cats as a way to bring a good fortune and a double if you feed and care for them. It is however seen as inappropriate to keep one of the cats as a pet, as most of them are feral. Even though the island is overrun with cats, the people who still live there work the hardest as the island became a popular tourist spot. Man, my girlfriend and little sister would love this place. Back at my farm, we have quite a few outdoor cats, with one of them having like the fourth letter. She sleeps around a lot. Next up, the Unison Spa. There are many different hot springs and spas all over Japan. And this one is quite unique, where instead of bathing in nice warm water, you can bathe in a multitude of different drinks like green tea, coffee, sake, wine, and even peppered water ramen broth. There are also many ceremonies for pouring the coffee and wine into the hot spring, which people would recommend you not missing. My girlfriend would love this. I'd be down to try out the green tea and wine hot springs, but the peppered watered ramen hot spring just sounds painful. That does not sound like a good time at all. Also, can you just imagine going there and then going out to hang out with friends and one of them goes, Hmm, what's that smell? Is there a ramen shop nearby? Then you just go, No, that's just me. What? Next, we have a very cute place with a very morbid twist. We have the island of Okinoshima, known for its cute fluffy punnies and poisonous gas. Back in 1925, after Japan signed the Geneva Protocol in order to ban the use of mustard gas, the island was home to the mustard gas plant that made over 6 kilotons of gas. The island was chosen for its secrecy and isolation and was even removed from the map so no one could find it. After the war, the gas was disposed of and all of the lab animals were released, which if I'm reading this correctly, were all bunnies. Due to the island having no natural predators, the bunnies were able to repopulate very quickly, along with rabbits that were said to be released for the theme park that opened up in 1988. They ended up renovating the two gas plants on the island into a museum and opened to the public in order to educate people about the role the island had in World War II. I would be so down to visit this place. I am a huge history nerd. When I go to Japan, I want to visit Nagasaki and Hiroshima in order to learn more about the history and also to pay my respects. I also want to visit Okinawa because one, it just looks beautiful, but also that's where the Battle of Hacksaw was and that is one of my favorite World War II stories. Next up, we have the Clone Factory. And no, it's not the one from Star Wars, sadly. Located in Akihabara, while the West sees stuff like this as uncanny and frightening, Japan has been working hard to make personal clones to become attainable in every household. Even though having androids is still a far away future, the Clone Factory allows you to make a 20 inch doll that looks exactly like you for about $1,750. Many people would buy their own clone mainly for special events like weddings, but you can also dress up your clone however you want, from a sailor uniform to a stormtrooper outfit. Oh my god, that is uh... I don't know how to feel about this. That is just very uncanny. That I, I, I would be very freaked out by that if I, if I end up buying one. And sure, it might be a little neat, but I don't think it's $1,750 neat. Next, we have the Christon Cafe for all my fellow believers. Though looking very different from western themed churches, this cafe wanted to capture Catholic churches from the medieval times, mainly the ones in Europe and South Africa. The cafe went with a more gothic look, with there being chandeliers, gargoyles, stained glass windows, velvet coloring, and many other things including their themed foods and drinks like the Little Devil and Joan of Arc as well as having coffin shaped menus. This sounds more like the vampire cafe than a Christian cafe. The restaurant has now become a popular place for joshikai or women only gathering, particularly with gothic lolitas who match the scenery of the cafe. After hours, the cafe turns into a nightclub and is rumored to host all night adult activity parties. What? That, that's not Christian. That's not Christian at all. To be honest, when I was making the script, I was reading this during one of my classes and I almost burst out laughing because of just how bizarre this was. 
Last one of the day, we have the Kawaii Monster Cafe. The restaurant was supposed to be a way to capture the neighborhood of Harajuku by making the restaurant loud and flashy, while also adding a hyper-cute aesthetic with a dark, creepy twist. Guests are welcomed through an entrance shaped like a giant googly-eyed monster and will be welcomed by bright colors in different parts of the restaurant having different themes. There's an area with a merry-go-round with different candies riding the horses, a mushroom disco area where you are under giant color changing fungi, the milk stand with bunnies and unicorn heads drinking from baby bottles hanging from the ceiling, the bar experiment where guests are able to drink cocktails inside the glow of indigo jellyfish, and the final part was the Mel Tea Room. In this room, guests are surrounded by pastel macarons and frosted wainscoting. On top of all of that craziness, the waitresses are also themed as of one of five different monster girls. There's Baby, who is sweet and kitten-like, Candy, who is excitable and neon, Dolly, who is prissy and covered in red bows and frills, Crazy, who is a moody, gender-bending alien, and Nasty, who is a sexy cyber goth. I am not making any of this up. On top of all of that, whatever the hell that is, the food is also referred to as a rainbow-tinted nightmare. With some popular foods like the rainbow pasta, which is a rainbow colored noodle mess, and the colorful poison parfait extreme dessert, which is an explosion of ice cream, cookies, frosting, and fruit. I am speechless. So not only will it make you feel like you are on some very bad stuff, but you'll also get diabetes. You know what? If I see it, if I have time, I will go visit this place and make an entire video about it. Because the truth, I'm, I'm honestly pretty curious about this. I am, I am interested. But anyways, that is all for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe to help support the channel. And comment down below, what are some places in Japan that I should visit? And with that, I will see you all in the next video.